Let's uh, begin with a, a short devotional to sort of set our minds and our hearts where the Lord would lead us tonight. Um, let me just read from Psalm 42, about six verses. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while then say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with a multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan. And I might just quickly see if you listen and follow that verses. Uh, any, uh, verse, any words that come up? as commonalities that we need to sort of focus on tonight? Soul. soul. We talked a lot about that last week, didn't we? Our soul. <laughs> remember. How can you not remember? So remember and soul. And so that, that's important. Um, we want to share from one of my favorite theologian scholars, Tim Keller. As if you would like to just to meditate on some word like remember or love or a soul, I'll play a song and it'll last maybe four or five minutes and we'll then get started. Son's name I pray. Amen. Again, just look at the outline. Last week we did the overview and prologue. Tonight we're going to take on uh, unit one. Uh, next week we will do the God word. The next after that will be man word, and the last night at the end of the month we'll do self word and try to fit in unit three. And if we can't get in all of unit three, you will have all the slides and sort of a summary. Okay, let's move on. Any questions about that outline? All right, a little test from last week. We talked about our biblical mind feeding off a spirit-filled heart. And we talked about the fact that we have a soul. We are made in the image of God, and he's breathed into us, into our nostrils, a soul. Got the words? What are they? Okay, Holy Spirit and the infusion of the soul. Now, I used a word before, only authentic. Why do I use the word authentic? There are other spirits, false teaching. We we might be filled with some spirit that's not God's Holy Spirit. And this is just a quick review. Those, I think, are key verses. We mentioned last week that there is a continuity between the Old and the New Testaments. Exodus, we have the first commandment. And then we have in Matthew, Jesus saying this, mind, heart, soul. We're trying to lay the tracks down on the ground for biblical truth, biblical doctrine, okay? Again, we said that we live in a world that is in disarray. We're hit every day 
every hour with a multitude of issues and thoughts, pressures, etc. aren't we? So how do we have a mind of Christ? We're told to have a mind of Christ. We're told to daily transform that. Okay, then tonight we're doing this. Uh, let's take a look at this tree. Blesses the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. He's like a tree that's planted by the streams. Um, does this mean that we, uh, we need to avoid being in the world? No. Well, what is the admonition, though, of this? We're to stay in the world, to evangelize, to be models, role models of Christ. What about, what about the word counsel? Man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Do we walk in the counsel of the wicked? Could we? Can we? So, you know, and again, I, I can't stress enough the fact that what we see and what we hear most of the time is probably of the counsel of the wicked. And so how can you digest and spit out the bad counsel and purge it, and retain the good counsel of God. What's required to do that? Pardon? Discernment, yes. Discernment, that's a, a God gift. Time with God. And when you're with God in your time, your mind and your heart are focused on your soul, Right? Yeah. What I'm trying to do tonight in the lesson is build another layer on top of last week's. We, we talked about the, the macroness of our mind and heart and soul. Okay. Now we're going to lay another layer of lacquer on top of that by looking at, more specifically, I, items and issues of God that we need to focus on in terms of making the bridge to the fruit. Okay? Okay? So be fruitful. Multiply. Jesus told us to do that. Are we ready to be fruitful? Do we have a fruit? Okay, what does it mean in the second one? Participation in the divine nature. What is the divine nature? You're living in the spirit. Okay? To live in the divine nature requires us, I think, to live an obedient, holy life that uses the mind and the heart to focus on our soul. Okay, so Christian spiritual formation is not simply fostering the experience. You're artificial. You're wearing a mask. You say something, but you really don't live it out not simply fostering the fact that you say you're a Christian, but you're living it out, you're fruit-bearing. All right, stop me now any time, raise questions. Sinclair Ferguson, I think he says something quite cogent here, he writes that the fruit of the Spirit should be distinguished from the gifts of the Spirit, but ought never to be absent in their exercise. If I'm teaching, I should never be put myself in a position of not showing love, showing being joyful in Christ, at peace with myself and with the environment. You know, we believe that our salvation is by grace alone, through faith. It's not works. And so this is what happens. Our works can become a curse and a bondage because it is of the flesh. Grace is through faith, love, the works of the Holy Spirit.
Can we easily get caught up in works, theology? Yeah. So that's something to be careful about because that's where one of the, uh, the, the wormy uh, weeds get into the perfection of the apple. Um, and we all fall into that trap. And that's where we have to be careful. You know, we're in tune with the Holy Spirit. We're honest with ourselves. We're honest with God. And we basically say, hey, why do I want that from the church? Why do I want to do that? Am I trying to impress God and say, hey, look at me, folks? No, not at all. God wants us to glorify him, right? Not ourselves. Lest any man should boast. So these are a few things that I dug out of scripture that talk about things that can happen through God's use of us in the spirit. We all don't participate in, in certain gifts. Find out what your gifts are and the uh, River Oaks website has a test that you can take. It's a self-assessment test that leads you through a series of, I don't know, 100 questions and you can plot the results and It'll show you, well, this seems to be a strength, this is a strength, and this, eh, you probably don't have it. So outside of grace, you get this kind of thing. Bondage. Now, what was the message of the song we had a little while ago? We're free from the slavery of sin, right? God has opened up a pathway through the water like he did for the Israelites coming out of Egypt. And so I, I think the important thing is that there's a, a process of devoting yourself to God. And uh, I would say that the first one probably, well, along with getting to love God, is to having a fear of God. Now, what do I mean by fear of God? What, what kind of fear are we talking about? Reverence. Doesn't God deserve our reverence? Can we use the word awe, A-W-E? We're in awe of God's power. And now think about it, you know what? We say maybe casually, yeah, we're in awe of God, but I mean, just reflect for a minute. Who created everything? A whole system of life. Beautiful. So uh, awesome. An awesome God, so we're going to, Fear God for the right reasons, and we're going to be thus, through our awe, led to love God and obey God. And that will lead then to the pinnacle of the apex. We will desire God. Desire will continue through that process. The more we desire God, the more we know God, the more we will have a reverent fear for God. Now, any of you ever had um, an awesome fear for a parent? The only time I feared maybe was if I did something wrong, I was going to get paddled or whatever. Um, that's not the kind of fear we, we have for God. Now, if we, in some families, I, I hope, and I, I don't count myself out of that type of family, when your parents love you, you respect them, you honor them, you will be blessed by them, you recognize it as a mature person, maybe not when you're immature, but you get to be more mature and you wake up and you get wiser. You look back, right? And say, really, uh, thank you, God, for that mother, that father. And, and then, in a sense, gee, I wish I had done this. I wish I hadn't done that, right? Um, somebody pull out Proverbs 8.13 for me, real quick. Uh, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. I hate evil, perverse speech, pride, arrogance. The root of a lot of sin is pride. 
and pride will lead to being self-righteous. And self-righteous will lead to that person who is works-oriented. So, you know, how much we appreciate God's love is conditioned by how deeply we fear him. So, let's move on. Just key in on the middle portion. Again, we're talking about the key things that we've been talking about that we we need to focus on. We have the mind of Christ to be in union with Christ. Fellowship with the Spirit to be the mindset we exercise with respect to one another. Self-word, aspects of the fruit, gentleness, self-control, social virtues. You might say, well, on Sunday morning we come to church, and uh, what is our mindset toward our neighbors that sit down in front of us? We greet them with a smile and a joyful, loving heart. I think maybe sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, do we, how do we feel when uh, our special seat is taken by somebody <laughs> before we get there? <laughs> I'm going to have to get here earlier next Sunday. Those people don't know. I, I don't know I sit here, right? Here's some verses that you might want to look at, and when you get your books, take a look at those, okay? Um, Move ahead to the next page here. So, do we pant over our desire for God? Does your uh, throat go dry sometimes because you haven't been close to the water? What is the water of life? The Word of God, right? Do we pant to get into the Word? Thirst after righteousness? Hope you don't mind me sort of, I told you the first night I don't, I might say some things or ask some questions that you feel like maybe I'm sticking my finger in your eye, but I'm sticking my finger in my eye, too. So we're all together, right? We're all sinners in the same boat going to heaven. I hope everyone is in that boat. The first section, we didn't have any questions. And uh, I'm not going to deal with those questions tonight, but hopefully you will, in your notebooks, spend some time. Um, Again, it's up to you to do that. Uh, you spend time in those questions, I, I think that you will gain more from this class and go back and review what is being covered and soak it up, soak it up. Just choose one of those passages and uh, memorize those verses, maybe, and just let it soak in. And um, We focus a little bit on the fruit and its cultivation. At the bottom... Whatever the man does will prosper, but the wicked are not like a tree, but are like the chaff which the wind blows away. We want to be God's person. I'll let you read that from your notebook, but uh, just as a, a footnote, I don't know if you have lived in Florida or tropical places where there were palm trees, but uh, have you seen the, the news from a hurricane, uh, the devastation of the uh, landscape. What do you see that's sort of odd? The palm trunk is still standing. Top is gone. Now, how is that possible? I mean, every, all the other trees gone. But there's, yeah, the roots. The roots are fibrous. And just multiple hundreds of little fibrous roots, and they're really not very deep. 
You see some of these big oak trees that are 100 years old that blow over? The root system is huge, and they blow over. Well, not a palm tree. Now, um, palm trees grow, live to be 70 or 100 years old. Uh, that's not as old as, say, the redwoods. But the fact of the matter is that why I mention that is that we, we need to have roots like the palm tree. And if we do, you know, we, as the slide shows you, we are the branches. It's your, the palm tree's branches. And what does the scripture tell us about the branches many times? What happens to every year with the palm tree and its branches? Yeah, have you seen... Uh, Brown, dirty looking palm fronds. Yeah, natural part of maturing and dying. Cut them off. Does scripture tell us that our branches, some branches will be cut off? Tree gets trimmed. And what stops us from being trimmed? A lot of times what we're talking about really is we're not producing any fruit. We're, we're not fruit. Yep, yep. If you prune your rose bushes, cut them back, you'll get more blossoms. If you have a geranium and you got a blossom that's died, go back to the bottom of the stalk, cut it off. It will not, that way it will give more nutrition back to those new blossoms. That's the way to have a geranium bloom into the fall. But if you don't cut those blossoms off, it won't produce new blossoms. Okay? Is that correct, gardeners? I think it's really well. It's all about bearing, being fruit bearing. And we can be uh, dead. We can be what's called a carnal Christian. We can be sort of a dead Christian. We're not really growing, and thus we're not producing anything. And when we're not producing anything, uh, are we really bringing um, glory to God in the highest? I don't think so. Now remember, though, that producing fruit for our own good works ain't going to work, right? It's got to be for God and God alone. Another set of questions. Hopefully you'll take a look at those. The final little piece to this night, and we'll go through that fairly quickly, is the fruit and the weeds. And, um, you know, we're told to Stay out of the weeds. Get rid of the weeds. Some weeds, they tend to grow overnight, as we know. Weeds can take over our lawn. Weeds can take over our life. And that bases on works, which is a curse. What you have up here is a sort of a comparison. What we're going to try to do is to... Uh, When we get into the next unit, God word, man word, self word, we're going to look at the three fruit per level. And we're going to, each one has weeds that you've got to look out for. Like, for instance, uh, love. The, the weed is hatred. And the uh, artificial fruit is limited love. So what do I mean by limited love? When you, to. when you want to love somebody, oh, I will today, but tomorrow, eh, I'm going to stick them in the gut. It starts, I mean, like at River Oaks, I think the, the purpose of a church is to bring people of like mind and heart together to worship together as a body in Christ. And I, I think that includes then 
sharing love. You walk in the door and you don't see somebody, oh, I wish I hadn't seen that person today. Uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. You know, did you hear about their kids? They're doing this and that and, uh-huh. So, and that's hard, I mean, right? And to love universally is, now some people are, I'm, I've been called, thank I bless the Lord for calling me into doing missionary work overseas. And, and a lot of times I've been in Haiti. And uh, you just uh, you learn to love on these people because they love you back. The Haitian people that go to church and love Jesus, uh, love Jesus. Because primarily, I think, because they don't have a lot of other things to love. And we have so many things to love, don't we? And I think I'm editorializing here, but you know, I, I think that one of the words that I find in the news and in, all around the, our secular culture is the word love. Oh, I love that person. You know, you, don't you hear it on TV and movies and everything else? Oh, she's a lovely person. I, I really. Oh. Just met that person and we really love them. I know I'm being a little facetious, but you get the point. A couple other questions. Are all the weeds equally bad or some worse than others? All sins are sins before God and whether they're, we think they're little or, or big, where they're still sins and the eyes of the Lord. Any uh, anything you want to review or ask me? So next Thursday night, Lord willing, we'll we'll look at uh, God Word, uh, low joy and peace. Um, do the questions if you are able to, and uh, you know, come prepared to ask any question if you want to about them. Um, just keep building up a sense of, uh, you know, the, I'm always thinking about, you know, what, what is in my mind. You know, I've stored up information all my life, and a lot of probably junk is there. It's like cal calcification of your vascular system. Start getting a little stuff build up, build up, build up, and it doesn't go away unless you have surgery or ablation or whatever. Uh, so we really don't know a lot of what's in our mind. That's clutter. That's of the world. And unless we really closely get with the Lord and with the Word, the Holy Spirit, if we do that, the Holy Spirit, I think, will show us point by point what should not be there. And if we have the desire to be obedient, we're going to say, goodbye, Satan, one down, three more to go. Show me what those three are, Lord. And I think he will if you truly uh, are in awe of the Savior. How about it? Thanks for your participation and your attendance and your interest. I pray that you uh, go and do well. Let me just close in a quick prayer. Lord God, we, we do thank you that your spirit.